Aloha. You know what to do. It's your boy, Farmer John Blaze, 808 Root and Prospects, and I hope you're having a blessed day. Um, today, I know it's kind of redundant, but we're going to go through how to properly spray and also what works against thrips. This stuff right here um, contains spinosad and it's three tablespoons per gallon and you can add like uh, yucca or something like that may aloe to help it stick anyways i'm gonna run it through and just try to give you all some info as i spray how i do you know just little tips and tricks you feel and i already shook this up and everything so anyways you want to spray like either in the mornings or the end of the evening when the sun is going to um, uh, magnify the droplets and cause, um, you know, like sun dots and burn spots on your leaves. All right, I'm going to do this like 12 pumps. All right. So... I like to start with the soil. Kind of hit all around the pot or, you know, the ground. Then I hit underneath. And the reason why you want to do it like this is because if you spray from the top, what's going to happen is it's just going to um, fold those leaves down and you're not going to get good coverage. And if you got any kind of bugs like spider mites, russet, uh broad mites what have you uh worms thrips anything like that if you miss one spot you're gonna still have them so you want to make sure you got full coverage and just soak them especially with this spinosad you don't really have to worry too much about it this is going to be like uh probably some of the last sprays for some of these ladies right here they're already kind of triggering going into transition all right so once i got the bottom and the middle hit the top and i soak it down all right looks pretty good you want it on a nice mist too you don't want it like streaming droplets and stuff like that all right that looks good now what do we do we're not done yet we hit the uh environment all around it you want to make a barrier so that no bugs are hanging out in, you know, your garden. At least bad bugs. Unless you're running beneficial, then, you know, that's a different story. So, yeah. Got the pot. Sprayed underneath. Went around. Hit the middle. Hit the top. Hit around the pot and environment. Also, um, if you're in the soil or outside uh, ants are probably gonna try to get to your water and your amendments so you might want to do something like put on um, ant bait traps or something another or a deterrent like cayenne or cinnamon anyways if you look at this one it's already in pre flower I usually only like to spray up to three weeks into flower and that's it and it really depends on what it's getting to you know if it's something really strong you know i don't do sulfur that late because it hangs out on the plant for a very long time all right let me get a fresh pump and shake it up and a gallon does my little garden right here so i hit the pot i'm gonna go around Pretty much I just circled the plant most of the time. All right, and then hit underneath. This stuff's really dense and thick, super indica, so let's soak it good. Come around here. Yes, sir. Hitting all the middle, underneath, swooping around, keep it moving. All right, now I'm at the top. Yeah, you wanna hit every every little surface area. 
That way you still don't got bugs and you're not wasting your time still battling and you're like, ah oh, man, I don't know why I still got bugs. Well, I had thrips consistently for like a couple weeks out here and the spinosad is the winner. Also was in it with some uh, sulfur mix and then I rotate with silica. And um, uh, what is that? Epsom salt, which has sulfur in it. thick one and uh, yeah I also rotate kelp that's really good kind of early in, in flower and all throughout veg and from when they're babies and stuff like that so yeah that's kind of what you want happening when they dripping like that in the environment I'm gonna give it a fresh pump in a second we're getting kind of weak I got a better sprayer but it's used for something else right now up hit all this. Give another shake. Yeah, that gorilla hog no skunk. Looking good. Real thick, real hardy. Beautiful. Almost has like a blue tinge to it. Like a turquoise. <laughs> same same you know it's kind of redundant but you know consistency is everything just like in life you know what I mean if you start working out you might you might see some results in a couple weeks but if you stop right then you know that's pretty much it but if you kept it going stay consistent then you know you're gonna really see some Results and transformation and growth, etc. You know, and the same thing with plants. They're just like uh, humans. And honestly, after um, oh, see, guard dog, good girl. Honestly, after um, feeding my plants organically and stuff like that, it made me realize that I need to start eating better and more healthy and organically. So it uh, helps a lot of people motivate to make some life changes. You know, this plant really is healing. People don't understand because it's been so demonized and used uh, illegally by like, you know, certain groups and stuff like that, illegally to make money, you know, and it's been kept that way. So anyways, I'm not trying to get political at all. Nope. But anyway, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm kind of stoned and getting cotton mouth. But, and she is thick. She really needs like half this bottle. It's crazy. We're getting there though. Yeah, so. And every plant's a little bit different. So you got to treat it a little bit different, you know. Let's see what else I want to talk about. Yeah, it's pretty much going to be one of the last sprays for this garden right here. Keep it nice and clean. And I will be spraying um, the environment pretty damn heavy since I won't be able to spray the ladies. And that really helps, you know, give them like a barrier. All right, I'm going to give her another little shake. It's gonna be a long video. But anyways, <clears throat> you know. <sighs> Gotta share the information and help other people so that they have success on that grow. Even if potentially I might not be able to finish because I was told I have to move out in 30 days during COVID, which I'm pretty sure is illegal. But We'll see what happens. Just gotta keep going, keep growing, stay positive. And yeah, I hope this helps y'all, you know what I mean? Because it helps me. I like sharing and teaching and helping other people. And 
Yeah, that's what life's about. We're supposed to be helping each other out and all that good stuff. Oh, I gotta repump it. I apologize if this video is kind of um, shaky. Can't really see what's going on or anything. Trying to keep it moving. That way I'm a good example and just not talking about it, you feel? All right. This one's taking a lot of work too. This is that Kalia Hogno skunk. She's a winner. Really excited. And there's one thing too about like growing your own medicine opposed to like going to a dispensary. For one, a dispensary is unaffordable. If you really need medicine and stuff like that, I mean, it'll probably run you a thousand dollars a month. Not even for like, you know, high quality medicine. And unfortunately, a lot of stuff is grown with chemicals and the stuff that isn't is really harsh and quantity over quality. So then you end up kind of chasing the dragon, almost trying to get good medicine when you go to a lot of dispensaries, you know, unless you can afford to buy the top end like $80 apes and $60 apes. Coming from Hawaii, I thought, you know, out here in California, the dispensaries be a lot more affordable and have better flour and stuff like that. But honestly, I had some of the best flour from the dispensaries out in Kauai. And it was like, you know, uh, a little bit more affordable in ways, you know? So there's something to say about that. And I've been to uh, dispensaries in LA and this and that, and all up in this area, you know, and it really is kind of sad, you know? And unfortunately they have to charge so much because um, taxes is 50%. So these dispensaries aren't really getting rich and stuff like that, you know what I mean? But of course we want a lot of tax money happening, you know, to promote the economy and stuff like that. Go to help with roads and schools and all that, of course. But 50% uh, is a little high, especially if you're a patient. Like you need it because you have an ailment it's not just recreational so we they need to figure something out like where your prescription is taken care of or a portion of it out here in california you know because that's the real good medicine and um yeah it needs to be treated that way and not just like a money money grab industry you know where it's very commercialized and stuff like that where you walk into a dispensary and you say you have uh, ADD what do you got and <laughs> the bud tender cute little girl doesn't even know anything about uh, weed <laughs> or about the actual medicinal effects or anything she's like you want sativa or indica and that's about it it's like well apparently I should have your job because I'm more qualified sad to say and like when I do meet a good bud tender or um you know sales representative and stuff at a dispensary I try to keep going back to that place and show them love you know what I mean because there isn't too much about that 98 percent of the shops they just trying to hustle you and that's sad because a lot of older people uh can't afford you know they get hustled and have to come back next week to get medicine when they need it for a month a lot of people are on fixed incomes, so the dispensaries and the taxing needs to find some kind of middle ground or something or another, you know what I mean? And um, work for the people a little bit more, or at least allow people to grow their own medicine more. Don't put a number on it because it's so hard to do this. I mean, you see this little plant, it's like took months, and that's not even going to do an ounce. Like, you know if i'm lucky so and there's quite you know there's this one right here and it's og it ain't gonna yield that much a couple ounces or something like that and i need to smoke about an ounce a week just keep my um ptsd anxiety etc i got you know some health issues i don't really like talking about but you know what i mean
I gotta stay heavily medicated. It helps my appetite, helps with my sleep, my anxiety, etc. So yeah, and they make it a little bit hard to stay medicated, you know, with cannabis, and yet you can go get like a, a prescription for oxycotton or Vicodins or something like that for like seven bucks to get a refill or some retired, you know? So, we need to get some people out there voting more for the medical. We need more research on the medical because when it's rec only, uh, the medical research stops and this is medicine. It isn't just like alcohol or something like that. It isn't just a stimulate a stimulant or something or another, you know? which truly recreational with no medicinal effects. And this is scientifically proven many and many a time. Oh, we're getting low. All right, almost done. Perfect time to stop the rant. That one's a little too far to be spraying. So good thing I stopped. Anyways, I hope this video helps some of y'all and I didn't bore y'all too much with my rants and stuff like that. But uh very thankful for all my um subscribers, followers, you know, everyone that likes, shares, comments, etc. Man, peace and love always. May you have a blessed day and make it your best day. One love. Aloha.